What's going on guys? Today in this video I'm going to show you how to install the power switch to your ANET A8 3D printer. Let's get right into it. Okay guys, let's look at what we're going to need for this. We're going to first need the power switch itself, some sort of a cover or holder for the power switch, wire connection terminals, a cable for the power switch, the original cable to the ANET A8. We're just going to use the wires out of it. We will not be using the other end. And some tools, preferably wire strippers and some with crimps on it, and a screwdriver for unscrewing the power terminals on the power supply. So let's do this. First things we need to do, if you've ordered the same switch that I'm using in this video, then it will come in three separate pieces. I've already stuck the fuse in to this plastic holder and all you need to do is line it up with the thing. It'll only go in one way and uh, slide it down in the middle slot on the switch. When it clicks, it's in and you now have a fuse in there that will protect your printer if anything were to happen, a uh, power surge or a uh, crossed wiring, hopefully that fuse would stop it from damaging the printer. Okay, the next thing we need to do is begin to prepare the wires. We're gonna want to uh, get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of these uh, terminal connections, the kind that will slide on to the end of the switch on the back here. You're gonna need seven of these. And then you're gonna need three that look something like this. This will slide on the uh, terminal connection on the actual power supply that's attached to the printer itself behind the screw. Uh, and so let's get uh, the wires made up and then I will show you how to connect everything. Okay, to start off, I'm just gonna use the cable that came uh, with the power supply that was with the printer. I'm gonna cut off, I've already measured it, right at five inches of wire. Uh, I'm just gonna use these snips that I've purchased and we're gonna cut off about five inches of wire right here. Okay, so we got about five inches. I'm gonna go ahead and cut the sheath off of this or see if I, okay. I was able to pull it right off without cutting the sheath. We don't need that. So I'm just gonna discard that in the trash. Now we've got our, uh, three different wires here. Three of these will be going to the power supply and then three will go here. And then all we need is two more wires to go and jump on the switch itself. So uh, let's go ahead and cut these up and then I'll show you how to attach the ends. Okay, I've got all the wires cut and stripped on the ends. We have two blue ones two browns and the ground wire, which is yellow green. Now we need to connect the uh, terminal connections that are gonna go on the back of the power switch there. Uh, now the little ones will both, on both ends, get the same kind of connection here. So let's go ahead and attach one of these. Uh, a small tip when you go to crimp these things, you wanna always face the uh, the, the terminal on the solid side, not, not the open side here. You wanna face that up. And when you go to put it in your crimp, you wanna make sure you put it in the divot. That way, when it's crimping down, it's the nipple is pushing on the solid side of this uh, connection here and not splitting the opened end on the bottom side there. Cause that's just uh, metal coming together and uh, it will split and not actually catch the wire. So that's just a little small tip when you go to crimp something, make sure the solid side is facing up in the little divot there. If you can see that, it's gonna go in the little valley. Okay, and so we got one side done. I'm gonna go ahead and finish uh, crimping the rest of these ends on real quick, and I'll be right back with you. Okay, now I've got all these terminal connections crimped on that are gonna go to the back of the plug. Now we need to connect the other terminals that are gonna to go to the actual power supply from the other side of the bigger wires here. So I'm gonna do that and I'll be right back. 
Okay, now that we have the wires cut and the ends on all the wires, we're gonna take the neutral one and it's gonna go right here on the bottom there. So you'll just shove that terminal right on there. Okay. Then we wanna take the brown, which is representing our uh, hot leg, and it's gonna go right here on the second one up, as you can see there. And we're just gonna bend that thing straight over, and it's gonna go on the first socket closest to it, just like that. Okay, and now we'll take our other jumper, which is the neutral, the blue, and it's gonna go right here in the center of the first two we did, just like that. And then we're gonna jump it straight over it's a little short, it's a little tight because I didn't make the wire long enough. But as long as the terminals here are not touching each other, it should be perfectly fine. Okay, and the last two are gonna be the blue long one and the brown long one. And you're gonna put those matching up with the ones that are plugged here. So the blue one would go again on the top and then you've got the brown one, which will go alongside the other brown one here underneath the blue one. All right. Okay, that's it. This is how it should look once it's wired up. Of course, we haven't hooked it to the power supply yet, but you've got long blue one, long brown one here. The brown is jumpered to the one closest to it in the middle here. You've got the blue one going to the outside, jump to the bottom one here. And then the ground all by itself at the very bottom here. Alrighty, uh, the next step is gonna be to go ahead and put it through our cover here. Okay, and we're gonna go ahead and give it a little push. Oh, and to mention, this cover, I printed it off Thingiverse. I'll add a link to it. I chose it just because I liked how it looked. There's other ones out there you can pick from. I just like the fact that it had the ANET A8 uh, cut out in it. And it looked pretty cool. So I chose this one. I'll link it down in the description. I'll also have a link uh, for to where you can get a switch just like this. Okay, and now we're gonna go ahead and attach this over there on the power supply itself. So. Let me move the camera and we'll get right to it. Okay, so here we are over at the power supply. Um, we're going to go ahead and lay our thing here. Now the order of the wires, you want to start from the left side. It's one, two, and three. The very far left is going to be your brown wire. So you're just going to want to slide that right under here. Let me get at a better angle here. And you're going to go ahead and slide it in the terminal. I know y'all guys can't see what I'm doing. But there we go. There's the first wire hooked up. It's right here. And I've got it in the very first terminal. That's the brown wire. The next wire is going to be the blue wire here. We're going to put it in the second slot right next to the brown wire. All right, so there we go. Now, they look crossed, and they are crossed, but the blue is going to the second one here, and then you got your brown one on the first one, on the left. And lastly, our ground wire, and this is a really long wire that I left, is gonna be on the third slot. So let me get that behind there. There we go. It's all wired up. The last thing you need to do is take a screwdriver here and we're going to go ahead and tighten these terminals up. So we'll just give it a little spin here. Okay, and then we'll tighten the blue one and the ground. Okay, it's all tightened up. 
And remember, it's it's brown, blue, and then your ground wire. And we can just flip our little cover here up and slide it on, making sure that nothing is touching the chassis itself. Okay. And one thing I forgot you will need in order to secure this uh, 3D printed cover is you're going to need a tiny little screw. This one came from a motherboard off an older computer. So something in that size range, I do not know exactly what size this is. Uh, but the slot on the side of this power supply where the screw goes fits it just right. So that's what I'm using. And uh, I'm sure with a small amount of research or if you have some screws laying around, you can find the right one. And again, I'm using my screwdriver to screw that out. Okay, and there we got it. That is on there. The last thing we're gonna do is go ahead and hook it to power. So I'm just using that uh, power cable I had. Any of these cables, uh, most TVs or even computers, uh, if you can find one, use these. They're pretty universal, it's just a little three prong here. All right, so we're gonna plug that right here into our power switch. And then I'm plugging the other end of the power switch into an outlet right over here along the wall. And let's see if this thing powers up. Okay, that is plugged in. And now I'm gonna flip the switch on the printer. And we've got a lot, that's a good sign. It looks like everything's working. We're gonna take the camera right around here. And there you go. The printer is on and it is working. So there you go, guys. This is how you're going to want to wire up your power switch to the side of your printer. And man, I tell you, that is convenient in case of any kind of emergency. If your nozzle decides to slam into the bed for some reason, a sensor fails, you've got an easy way to shut the printer off very quickly rather than having to either reach under your table and jerk out the power cable from wherever it may be. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope it helped you out and I'll see you in the next one.